what's going on everybody thank you for stopping by to check out my video in this video i am just going to go ahead and talk about my latest mock project this is something that i worked on for the past two weeks this was something that i wanted to have ready for the arrival of the coruscant gunship set that just released two days ago on the first unfortunately i didn't have time to go to the lego store and pick up a box on release date, um, I had some other things to do. Actually, went scuba diving, so that's pretty much the reason why I delayed that. Uh, so by the time I got back home, the set was already sold out at the store, so I ordered it, so it'll be coming in due time. But anywho, let's begin with my description of the mock in general. So we're gonna start off on this section over here. All right, so here is the clone base uh, portion of the mock. And just to show everybody, this can, this is just in two parts. So, you know, one half or each half is on the uh, large Lego base plate that you can just pick up at any Lego store, Walmart, Amazon, pretty much anywhere that sells Lego. So the bottom of each uh, portion is, yeah, it's on these base plates. And underneath, it's reinforced. Um, I just made like a cross section of bricks, slapped some other plates on top of it just to give it a sturdy, strong feeling. So of course, the mock itself does not bend if I pick it up. So let me just show you real quick, up and down. I'm only doing it on this side because this is sturdy, but is it's pretty heavy. This whole section, I would say, is anywhere from 20 to 25 pounds. I mean, it's not heavy, but it's heavy for the, for the Lego set. I don't want to stress out the structure itself. Um, so I made the structure um, just as, as is, like this doesn't lift up, doesn't open. Perhaps I should have done that, but honestly, um, I don't like, uh, I'm not gonna work on an interior if you can't really see it. Um, the only interior that I've worked on that you can actually peek into is the garage area where the speeder bike is, and I did include a light in there that I got from uh, Ikea. Um, pretty inexpensive. I think they're like, I don't know, uh, anywhere from five to $10, but it doesn't need batteries. Um, I worked the wiring to come out on the back portion of the base, and then that can just be connected to a USB port or a phone charger, and then voila, you got your light. But um, I think it's a cool add-on. Uh, for the display and uh, I included a, uh, the set from the Bark Trooper speeder Lego set that came out, I don't know, anywhere from I think 2012 or 2013. It came with a Bark Trooper, two Super Battle Droids, which I've got them over there. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a pretty cool add-on just because it is in red and white colors, which obviously match the base itself. Throughout the base, of course, I have 501st uh, clone troopers from the 501st battle pack that came out I think back in 2020 and the latest ones that with the helmet holes which I've utilized perfectly to customize so I got a heavy uh, you know trooper here just getting ready to mow down these commando droids and these commando droids did take out some regular clone troopers but I wanted to display a scene where the whole base is under siege obviously they're being attacked from the outside and when I get that uh, Coruscant gunship set, you know, obviously it's gonna be displayed here on the top, but I'm gonna kind of make a, or depict a scene where Palpatine is being evacuated with Padme, um, also with other VIP um, personnel that need to get off, uh, off of this base before it's overrun. But um, as far as the platform goes, so, I still need to figure out whether or not I made this big enough for the Coruscant ship to be actually sitting on top without any issues. I did check the website, uh, Lego's website. It showed that the Coruscant gun ship, dimension-wise, it's about five and a half inches tall, and wingspan is 16 and a half inches, and from back to front, it's about 10 to 11 inches. So this is 10 by 10 by 10. So I should be able to, you know, sit it down here the same direction that 
OB Starfighter is sitting in. Of course, I'm gonna have to remove these. I just placed these guys here for now for you know aesthetics. Same thing with the sniper um, over there and you know some random power generator. But um, overall, I'm confident that this should be big enough. If anything, I may have to modify the edging of the platform because there is like a bit of a wall here. So if this has to go, then I will make the proper modification so the gunship isn't bumping in against this. I don't want it to be kind of tilting on the edge. Same thing with the, uh, the trim here. And then also, I may kind of ease back on the red tiling. I feel like the top portion kind of maybe overdid it with too much red. Might fill them back in with gray, uh, dark gray tile. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Just kind of hit and miss there. But anyways, um, overall, I just wanted a nice clean look for the, the uh, clone base itself. This is a big step up compared to my original clone base that I created a year and a half ago. I had that on display for a while. It's kind of like an open hangar with one of the Republic uh, tanks in there. But this time, I just kind of wanted to make it look like an actual uh, structure. Um, and yeah, I really liked how it came out. And I did my best to kind of keep the patterns going with the uh, exterior all the way around. There isn't like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I can't, I don't know if I can show you here on this end. Sorry for the sun. But over here, you know, made sure it's even with, with, the, with the brick placing. You don't see any like, um, you know, random pink colors, any filler bricks. I made sure to hide all of that. Um, so yeah, I made sure I added as much detail as I possibly could to the structure and kind of give it that nice, clean military base look that you usually see in Clone Wars or just any military structure. Oh, and this, in case you're wondering, this is just, this, this isn't like a window. This is just uh, supposed to be like a, a shield. Kind of like uh, just a force field, like you know the shield generators that they have in Star Wars. Obviously, I cannot make a huge dome out of that, so I just worked with the idea of this being like a gate, and this is just the only last line of defense, sort of, before if this were ever to be taken out. Then we've got you know some clones ready to prepare, uh, preparing to like repel all borders before the uh, defenses out here completely fall uh, for what's coming. So. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this next section. All right, so the outside of the base is something that I did enjoy creating. I lately have kind of realized that whenever I do make mocks, I try to incorporate nature as much as I can into my designs. Uh, I made a uh, Grogu's training mock that I still have uh, in display. Uh, I love making my Felucia mock using plant elements. I am a big nature uh, junkie. I like doing things outdoors. So being uh, growing up in the state of Florida, I have a lot of inspiration to draw from. And you know, in this um, this particular area, I, I don't have a you know specific planet or location where this is taking place. But uh, I wanted to make it look as exotic and kind of uh, remote as possible out here. So uh, for starters, this little, these waterways that I've got going on here, um, I, you know, made sure that the uh, edge of the mock does include, you know, the water itself. Like you can see the water line, obviously I made it just kind of, you know, blend in with the landscape itself. And what I did here was just kind of stack several of uh, one by two, uh, clear, like kind of dark clear, uh, little base plates with the light blue ones, just to kind of, you know, give it some character, I suppose, into the water and just made it seem like a kind of a stagnant or little swampy pond underneath, just to kind of give it the illusion that it is deep. Uh, I, st uh, I placed these, uh, smooth, uh, clear pieces on top of, uh, like light gray plates to give it that illusion. If I use any like blue ones in the future, I've done it in the past to kind of give it a, uh, the illusion of, uh, of a deeper water setting, I would stack light blue ones on top of black plates. And that really works well. Because if, uh, if I were to stack these on top of something light colorish, like even this brown or uh, sand yellow, it'd be kind of noticeable. It was an eyesore. I learned that lesson with uh, uh, 
Rebel versus Empire mock that I did not too long ago. Um, and I like how it turned out. It does, you know, look natural. You really can't, you know, tell if you could see the, uh, the plates underneath. And then, you know, I've got a ton of these plant pieces that I got from lego.com to add into it, just kind of fills in the uh, pond area as well. Working with dark greens, and then I've got these vine pieces, which I guess they classify that as animal tusk or tentacles. Pretty sure uh, I got these off of Bricklink and whoever was selling them most likely got them from that uh, Doctor Strange set with that Cyclops monster. But um, yeah, it just works out because it just looks like some alien plant life that's just growing naturally within the uh, landscape. And I try to make it nice and clean, but not too, I mean, I made it, maybe I made it too smooth right there, but I think of it uh, as it, I can't even talk. I, I think of it this way. So if this is a pathway where these speeders are constantly moving out, you would think that with the amount of foot traffic or vehicle traffic, it's gonna be smoothed out over time. Um, so that's my excuse for that. But I try to make it as, you know, not too smooth, uh, included some studs, you know, just being in the areas where the plant life is gonna grow. So that kind of feels natural to me. And yeah, it just works out. Um, over here, I just kind of made it as the driveway of the base, which eventually blends into the landscape. You know, I worked on that as best as I could, but I like the pattern that I went with there. Um, and then the, my favorite part is these, uh, like, uh, entrenchments that I made for each of the clones. So on this side, this uh, this area, this was obviously taken out because these two clones are not having a good day. We got uh, Commander Cody covering, uh, providing covering fire so this medic can help this wounded clone right there. That there, that Jedi, is a representation of me. And so this spider droid does not give Commander Cody and the medic a bad day. I am lifting it with the force and eventually would most likely destroy it. Uh, so I think that's just a cool little sequence just to put in there. And then I've, of course I've added some destroyed battle droids uh, throughout the uh, scene as well. And then I've got this heavy trooper with a big, big gun, uh, kind of just making his last stand, helmet knocked off there. And he's gonna just, you know, try to take out as many droids before he himself could possibly be taken out as well. Then I've got other uh, clones here who are just getting ready to blast away uh, at this tripod. This, I didn't create myself. This came with that uh, battle pack, uh, the, the 2 battle pack that released back in 2012, 2013. Um, I did uh, manage to get one on eBay with the clone troopers themselves uh, for a pretty, pretty decent uh, price. I actually have two of them, but I wanted to add one in here along with you know the spider droid that came out with the uh, AT-ST or AT, you know, one of the AT-ATs, um, the Clone Wars one. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, ha I, keep, I keep getting these uh, vehicle models all mixed up. AT-ATS, AT-ST, AT-TE, yeah, AT-TE, I guess that's it. But anyways, um, yeah, I ended up getting two of those. And yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, just add more of a threat level aside from like, you know, uh, a, a, a platoon of, um, or squad of, you know, battle droids coming in. You know, there's gotta be more of a reason why um, things are falling apart here. And if they've got some, some heavy backup. I could, if I wanted to, uh, get that separatist tank that, uh, and, place it there. I feel like I've got enough room to, you know, just place it there, but then that would be the uh, only thing I could put there. These battle droids I'd have to move or just spread them out everywhere else. But, you know, overall, I liked how it turned out. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is that with these, um, you know, these archways, I wanted to make this as a pillbox. This is definitely something I'm going to be working on later on, um, you know, just bit by bit. I kind of ran out of ideas, uh, you know, when I was kind of done building this, I was just, you know, done in general. I was like, all right, my creativity's gone. So I'll uh, figure something out in time to make that more detailed. But um, yeah, overall, I really, really love how this section turned out. 
Um, definitely gonna be keeping this on display for a long time. Um, and just, you know, work on it some more and just see, you know, how it just, you know, uh, grows on me. So let me know what you think about the uh, base. Uh, again, thank you for stopping by to check out the video. And uh, overall, uh, I'll make another video as soon as I get that gunship. And once it's displayed, you'll be able to see how it looks.